Hey everyone. A little cocoa project that I've wanted to do for quite some time now and I finally got around to it. Um, so with the help of a little liquid courage, let's get right to it. This is going to be a meet up front details in the back kind of operation. So we'll fire up the CM8. The color computer is not actually attached to anything. So if you look at the cocoa, this multi-pack isn't connected. I can just kind of do whatever with it. So uh, this is just straight up straight up and if we power it up we go straight to OS 9 boot so this is the OS 9 ROM kit from Cloud9 that I actually bought back in 2002 um, and for an embedded project I had an idea for and I never did it so I have a few other modules that I've loaded in here I mean the Color Computer 3 having a 32k ROM um, I used regular OS 9 level 2 um, it does have Nitrous 9 modules, but it's pretty old Nitrous 9, so I'll probably try and see if I can make it work, but this kit was before they had the Nitrous 9 only kit, so it came with directions for OS 9 level 2 and Nitrous 9 level 2. It also, I bought the Net level 1 kit along with it. Here I have my module directory, there's not much, just the basic needed to make it boot, and I have, I have mFree and DIR because there's an 8K RAM disk as part of the module on the Cloud9 kit that it kind of sets up for the default drive. Um, and then if I do enter as I already did, I may have display on there too, so I can display speed. Or display. Beep. So the main thing with this is, with OS 9 level 2 straight up, if you go easy on the modules, you could probably get about 12 or 13k of your own program in there, which isn't much. If you threw Run B on there, it'd be a pretty small basic 09 program if you could fit it even. Um, but you could write something using the development kit in assembly language, but just one more time so you can see that boot with the monitor warmed up. I think it was enough, but one more time. We'll give it a few seconds to clear out. So it goes right to OS 9 boot. You get a little flash of the screen there, um, and then it goes back to OS 9 boot, and it's up. It's up in a couple of seconds, four or five seconds. So next up, we're going to get into how this was done. In case you're wondering what came within OS 9 Level 1 and Level 2 ROM kit in 2002 from Cloud9, here it is. So I got myself my little invoice here. I'll back that up a bit. You can see September 10th, 2002. Interesting due date, September 9th. Anyway, the whole kit was a bargain. They even give you a $4 discount for buying both. So 16 bucks. Not bad. And something else on there. And then this is the uh, instructions that came with it. So this looks a lot different than the later Nitrous 9 kit that rolled around 2004-2005. Manual looked a lot more like the later Cloud 9 manuals, like the Super IDE. And of course, you got a disk for each. So on the left, I have the Level 2 kit. And then on the right, I have the Level 1 kit. And then the ROM, which of course would not include the HVAC foil tape. Um, that's my own lovely addition. So that is the OS 9 ROM kit for level 1 and level 2. Since I bought the level 2 kit um, for the Coco 3, they sent me the 32K ROM. This is VCC. I don't have a video capture on this, so uh, you'll have to live with the camera, I'm sorry. But in slot 4, I have an FD502. In slot 3, I have the hard drive controller. And then in drive 0, I've got the Nitrous 9 Ease of Use Edition, 68 EMU disk. And in drive one, I can just put whatever disk I want. And then I've got the virtual hard drive there, so let's just get that booted up. Now, before I get started, I have to delete the two files in final, and I will show you the rest of the steps. One thing I will note is that um, there were a couple things that were a little different, but it was obvious where they were going, so it was no big deal. The only thing that threw me off was that here it says that the 6809 version has your merge OS code, and that ended up not being a thing. Um, it turns out they merged it in with, to the module for you before you went there, so I actually didn't have to do that. So let's take a look at what we have here. So I have, oops, okay. So the modules that I'm going to show you here are all from OS 9 level 2. The reason for that is I had the system master and basic 09 disks um, and images floating around, and of course they're on the color computer archive if I didn't. 
Um, and also the Nitrous 9 version that this was targeted for is much older, so I wasn't sure if it was going to work, but I was pretty sure that the regular tried and true Tandy Microware OS 9 level 2 modules would work. So first thing we're going to take a look at is I have a list of files on my ROM list. And for some reason that first key didn't take. Okay, so here's what we have. And these are all of the locations where they can be found. Um, I actually used the Deskmate text editor to edit this file. Uh, um, so anyway, uh, ROM info, which uh, all of this is described in the Nitrous 9 kit, um, what the various modules do. Uh, OS 9 P2, uh, the init uh, device descriptor for the RAM disk, IO manager, RBF, uh, the RAM drive module, uh, SCF, obviously, CC3IO, CC3GO, uh, the term VDG device descriptor, and the VDG and describer at 60 hertz clock, and then the modules that I chose to include in the ROM image so that they would be there when I started up. So that would be shell, mdir, mfree, dir, and display, which are all the commands I already showed you. Um, so let me just uh, see what's in final here because I'm going to have to delete any old ones. Um, boot. os 9rom Oh, <laughs> dummy. Now I should have nothing in there. Very good, okay. So there are three main steps to this. The first step is to merge, M-U-R-G-E, a command that comes with the ROM kit, the, all the files in the ROM list, and run them out to romboot.obj. So that's easy enough, chx dd rom cmds. And I'm gonna merge, and yes, that is right, believe it or not, ROM list final slash rom boot dot obj let's just do that the 80 column windows are great for uh, making sure everything's there okay so we have rom boot dot obj so now i can just use ident to figure out what modules are in there now since i changed my execution directory we're going to give it the full path to there uh, ident final slash rom boot dot obj and here we go, and I didn't have T-Mode pause on, so it's going through. But you can see all the modules there, everything passes the header test. Okay, so the next step is we now need to pad ROM. Let's make sure my execution directory, oh, DDCMBS pad ROM, uh, PXD. We now need to pad ROM, I'm in the right place, the ROM to make the size of the existing modules plus any padding uh, hex 6 charlie 0, zero bytes. 6C00 bytes in hex is 27,648 in decimal, that's about 27k or so. So with that, we now need to pad it to make sure that it is that big. So pad rom 6C00 final slash rom boot dot obj. Now at this point, if you run ident on this file afterwards, after the last module, after display, you're going to get an invalid header. The, the remaining code needs to be at specific spots in the ROM, so they start at base address of zero in the ROM, but of course when you put it in the color computer that address is not going to be base, base address of zero. You need to get everything lined up so that the boot code that the ROM vectors at the top of ROM point to, uh, to execute, and that includes the boot track and OS 9 P1, and there's a ROM boot uh, module that Cloud9 builds. All of that have to be in the right place in ROM, otherwise it won't execute right when the machine powers up. I explained that poorly, I apologize. Uh, you know where I'm going. Let's take a look at the last bit here. So now, to make this command a little easier, I'm going to... That's what always happens. Okay. And now, we are going to... I've already deleted the model image, so we're going to merge. This is the real merge. DROM final ROM boot dot obj. So then we have rel ROM 6809 obj. And then we've got dot dot slash boot rom dot obj. And then we've got OS 9 P1, as I mentioned before, dot obj. Okay, and then we need dd rom modules rom uh, vectors. Oops, and I need to do that and send it out to uh, dd rom final os 9rom I don't know why I forgot that it says it's done. Went pretty quick. Let's see what happened. Okay, OS9rom, just so it appears nicer. 
should be uh, 8,000 bytes, that's in hex, so it should be about 32K. And there we are, 8,000. To extract the ROM image, I'm going to use the OS9 Toolshed tools. Okay, so now we've got our ROM file out. I'm going to copy it over to another machine because that's where my ROM, EEPROM programmer is, and we're going to do that step next. Okay, we have our EEPROM and our EEPROM programmer, and as you can see, um, I kind of half-assed the plug connection to come with a power supply, but I had one that matched, so I did some splicing with a matching plug. Anyway, let's drop our EEPROM into the socket and make sure that it is snug. We'll close this, and I know this is going to look a little funky. I apologize for that. I'll back up a bit. Um, the file offset here is going to be zero. While that's not the location in the Cocos memory, memory map, in terms of the ROMs, base address, zero is the starting address. So now let's just go command and write. It will verify. Verification, 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 verification complete. Now let's go over and plug it into the Coco and see what happens. So let's just set the keyboard back where it is. Power up the CM8, and we'll give it a minute to warm up so we can see that it works. Say hello to the Model 4 and the Model 16. The Model 16 is going to be in a video soon because Xenix 3.3 rolled its way on the archive thanks to the Frank Durda collection, and I am very excited about that because it's Xenix 3.2 and I want to upgrade it. But anyway, another video. Here we go. And look at that, we have OS 9 boot. And we have a copyright and a shell, so I'm hoping you don't get too much of a pattern on this thing, but we'll just look at see what we got. M3, like it's a question. Cool. One thing I actually haven't tried is hitting the reset button. And there it goes, right back to OS 9 boot. That is very cool. This isn't necessarily necessary anymore. Say that ten times fast. Um, there's a lot of other ways to get code into these things and make them a little more embedded without the need to uh, swap the ROM out. Like a Coco SDC would actually be perfect, you know, like this one. Um, because you could simply pop it in, you've got access to the code, and once it's up, if it's connected to something else, you could probably reach it remotely. But it's still a very cool thing, and I really like hardware-based modifications like this. I could even take out VDG and Term and literally just use it as an embedded processor of some sort of controller. So that's a very neat thing. I hope you enjoyed this video.